All right, folks, I have here a tub of 100 low dollar video games. Today, we're gonna answer the question, who in town pays the most for video games? So let's start out with this pawn shop right here and see what they offer me for these gems. lovely games to sell you today. I was curious what y'all were paying for these. So on PS3 games, we sell them for about $2 to $3 a piece. So on the PS3 and just Xbox 360, it's probably about a dollar a piece. Okay. I'm gonna maybe get a, another couple offers, but I totally understand. Yeah, it, I wouldn't be surprised. I'm about to go to GameStop, so I wouldn't be surprised if it's not the worst offer I get today. Alrighty, so offer of eighty dollars or so. Given that we had a decent number of these things in there on our first stop, honestly, not as bad as I was expecting. Today we're gonna to be going to three other video game stores to get their offer on this stuff as well. And what I didn't tell you guys before is that the one that offers us the most money is going to get all of these five other bins worth of trade-in as well. The other three stores are gonna be GameStop, Game Exchange, and my local game store, Matt's Games. And on top of everything, I'm also here today back with Spanky. What did you think of that first offer? Poop. <laughs> I mean, it, it. given what they're selling this stuff for, I honestly didn't think that it was bad, but hopefully we'll get a little bit more at Game Exchange. All right, folks, next stop, Game Exchange for our 100 game challenge. Spencer, any predictions for what they're gonna give us at this stop? 137. I would honestly be really happy with 137. My prediction, I'm a little bit less optimistic. I'm thinking 60 bucks. <laughs> I think they might honestly be less than the pawn shop, but I don't know, maybe I'm too pessimistic, we'll see. Couldn't be better. How are oh, you? got some stuff to sell us? I got a good amount of stuff. To awesome. Sell you if you want to put it on the counter right there, I'll be right there. Thank you. I love this. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah, I've got a hundred of them. Exactly. The, uh, hundred exactly? A hundred exactly. Fantastic. Yeah. Um, if you guys yeah, just like want to look enough, around, man. hang out, uh, yeah. I'm going to start working on this and I'll call you over when I'm ready for you. Perfect. Yeah, I appreciate it. Thank you. Have a great you. day now. Is that Neil? Yes, hi there. How you doing? How's it going? Good to see you again. Good to see you too. <laughs> if you do, you're banned. Now this thing is godlike. So as you guys know, our mission today is to sell off all of those games, but what can I say? I'm an addict. I can't help but also buy if we're here. <laughs> Gotta scan through these and see if there's anything that's underpriced. And I did find a couple Pokemon Battle Revolution as well as Bloodstone 07 that I am excited about. And I even recruited Spencer to help me scan through stuff. Let's go and check in on him. So I basically just gave Spencer the Amazon seller app and was like, go to town, scan whatever you think is interesting. So Spencer, what kind of stuff have you been scanning here? Well, the ever popular Mercenaries 2 okay. World of Flames. Okay, yep, not a not a bad choice, I'll say. Did you scan this one? NCAA March Madness no, 05? No, I Spy Hunter. Okay. That definitely was one. Yeah, I mean, not, not a bad title. I think you would lose money the second you bought it. But you actually managed to find one that was profitable. What was that? I found one. Kill switch. Take cover, take cane. I'm proud of you, dude. Yeah. This is this is a big bucks. moment. 20, yeah, that's right. Six into 20 or so before fees. So probably about a double up, which is exactly what we look for. So proud. Yeah, so for these 80 or 98 games, uh, I can either do $68.60 in in-store credit or $49.40 in cash. Okay, I think I'll probably get a couple other offers on it if that's okay. No, that's fine. But I did find a good number of games to buy. Okay. So I guess I I'll be leaving with more than I came in with. <laughs> Sounds good. Honestly, I, I just want to see you succeed. I want to see you get as much money as you can. Well, thank you. <laughs> well, guess what, folks? We came in with 100 games and we're leaving with, <laughs> I don't know, like Bro. 110, <laughs> which is, you know, not ideal. But at the same time, it's good that we're leaving when we are because Spencer has to poop. Poop again. So definitely a profitable stop, but one that took honestly probably like over an hour. So <laughs> we're both ready for lunch at this point. And I can just hear the hater Hanks now. Can you hear them, Spencer? They're already they're already at the keyboard. They're saying this is not safe. <laughs> Gosh. Oh crap! I turned it the wrong place. 
This, this Phoenix resale, he's going to all these video game stores and making them do all this work, and he's not, he's not even gonna sell them the games. That's so dumb. But what you guys have to realize is that one, these people are paid by the hour, and second of all, this is for science. Science rules. Thousands of people are going to benefit from the data that we collect in our study today. So, Hater Hank, you can suck a lemon. So, Spencer, what is your reaction to game exchange being actually lower than the pawn shop offer? Well, I predicted 137. It was about a third of that. <laughs> so, well, I thought the pawn shop offer was poop. So this was obviously like poop times two and a half. What I, I don't know if I said this at the beginning or not, but those are all trash games, like really bad. So bad that I can't sell them profitably. If I have to pay shipping and fees, I'll make like a dollar or two. So I was kind of expecting in the dollar or two range. But yeah, folks, if you've got a local pawn shop that just pays a flat rate for every game, it may not be a bad idea to take some of your lowest end stuff there because, you know, they'll give you the same amount as they would for like a nice high dollar game. All right. Hey folks, so we're here at stock number three, GameStop. Spencer, now that you have the context of just how bad these games are, what's your prediction? $40 cash. Honestly, I was gonna say 30, so I think we're not far off. While you're um, processing this, is it okay if we go take yeah, a look at stuff over here? here? Yeah. Thanks. Alrighty, so I'm here checking out the Switch games. I sometimes am able to find stuff at GameStop that is flippable. I'm not seeing a ton this time, but I did find this right here. Super Monkey Ball Banana Mania for 23, and I know I've got $5 credit to use, so I think that's a pretty decent deal. I actually played this with a friend recently, and it was a lot of fun, and I don't have it for the Switch collection yet, so I think I'm gonna pull the trigger. Well, folks, fun fact about Spencer, he just got 11th place. Tis. 10th place. Top 10 finish. <laughs> Look at that. 10th place in Mario Kart. Yikes. Fake gamer. Fake gamer alert. Well, folks, if you guessed $11 for three <laughs> games, then you were right. The other 97, they couldn't take because they're just not doing a lot with retro stuff anymore, even though this isn't that retro. But uh, yeah, not the highest bar to beat for Matt's, our last stop of the day. And I'll actually, I got a few things there that I'll show you guys in the car too. All right, so the ones that we picked up, I told you guys about Monkey Ball and Jackbox. I also saw they had Clubhouse Games, 51 Clubhouse Games, which I found out recently is one of Scott the Waz's favorite games on the Switch, so I had to pick that up, another party game. And also, get this, PlayStation 1 game. He told me they're not supposed to be taking these things in anymore, but for some reason, they had Saga Frontier 2 on the PlayStation 1. Unfortunately, it is missing the manual, but for 17 bucks, it was hard to turn it down. In reality, it's only worth maybe like 25 or 30 if it had the manual it'd be worth more but was not a bad pickup i mostly was just super interested to find a ps1 game at a GameStop. but let's go ahead and get to matt's and cross our fingers that he can offer us more than 68 dollars well technically actually more than like 90 or 80 or 90 dollars in trade credit we will also surprise him with these other five bins of trade-in if he can manage to get the best offer of the day so let's see if he can Alrighty folks, last stop of the day today is Matt's games. We're crossing our fingers. Also curious to see what Matt offers us for these games. 260 sound fair. 260 in credit? Yeah. Sounds great to me. Good. So I've got like I've got a bunch of bins worth in the car. If you want to pick through, you're welcome to. Okay. Just the stuff that you do need. Okay. Um, but I just I wanted to give you guys first shot if it is something that you need. Alright, well I will be right back with some of those other things. And yeah, 260 sounds great on that. Thank you. Yeah. All right, folks. So $260 in credit. Oh my gosh. That was honestly, if I would have made a prediction ahead of time, I would have said they would probably be in the same range as the pawn shop. So yeah, we'll see how many of these other ones we can possibly unload today and follow up with you guys for a grand total of everything that they buy as soon as we know. Moral of the story today, folks, is support your local game store. Oh, we got a bunch of Wii in here, that's good. Yeah! 40, 400 pounds, that's not very incredible. Yeah, that sounds good. Sweet! Appreciate it, thank you. Absolutely. So folks, 
Got a good, little bit of a good news, bad news situation going on here. The good news is we're up $400 in trade credit and I got a bunch of solid games uh, for Amazon that are much smaller and much easier. The bad news is we've still got a solid four plus bins worth of games that even Matt's didn't want. So I think we're gonna have to go back to another pawn shop and pawn off as many of these as we possibly can. All right, folks, so here's the game plan. Take these two bins of stuff. I already called the pawn shop that's right across the street. They said that they'll give us a dollar for any like PS3, Wii, 360 game that is not a sports game. So we sorted them all out. We've got two bins worth of the stuff right here and we're gonna see if we can actually get a dollar a piece for everything. Alrighty folks, so here is the little haul that we got with a hundred and something dollars of that credit. We got a couple of Lord of the Rings Xbox games, Mortal Kombat Armageddon, we got this uh, Call of Duty combo pack, Rugrats on the PS1, Star Wars Demolition, Tiny Tanks, and believe it or not, a couple of candles for The Office. Uh, these things were two for 25 and I sniffed them and I just, I, I couldn't resist. What can I say? Tickle the like button, folks, for the candles. <laughs> Folks, there's a literal egg out here that I just saw. Look at that, an egg. Egg in the mulch. Just had to show you guys. Come and get me! Okay, so there is a limit. Yeah, and I did not realize that on the game, so I'm sorry about that. Okay. Well, I guess I'll do 20 of them then. Well, folks, we were in there for probably like 20 minutes, and guess what? Not worth it. Your friend is a high roller. As it turns out, getting rid of 500 plus awful video games is more difficult than I thought. In hindsight, it would have been best to just sell the 100 to the first pawn shop, sell a bunch more to Game Exchange, and then come to Matt's and sell a bunch more and then some more, you know, et cetera, et cetera. But uh, at least this way we did get the hard scientific data of the exact same games offers at each stop. Is your finger in it? <laughs> and the order ended up being Matt's Games, Pawn Shop, Game Exchange, and finally at the bottom, no surprise, GameStop. So I think ultimately what I'm gonna have to do with all this stuff is just make one huge Facebook Marketplace post, stack it all up, take pictures of everything, and just have somebody come and take everything for some ridiculously low price. So honestly, not the ending I was hoping for for this video, but I wanna end on a more positive note. And that higher note is this. What, Caleb, you, you've taken up coloring as a grown man? Is that the big surprise? No, this is our mortgage. Cause I was thinking the other day, I haven't honestly been great about sharing with you guys some of my broader goals for the channel and the business going forward. And I thought it'd be fun to bring you guys in on the vision a little bit because my wife Erica and I have been doing a lot of dreaming recently and we both agree that the thing we're both most excited for right now is moving into our dream house. And this would be a huge step for the business because part of that dream house is having a separate garage slash warehouse slash barn that I can operate this business out of. Right now, you guys can see pretty much this whole business is run out of this spare room along with the two sheds and also more recently, <laughs> our second spare room, by the way, thank you Spencer for organizing the rest of these games for Facebook. And I think the next big way to really level up the business and give it an opportunity to scale and to breathe a little bit, maybe hire another employee or two, would be to get into a new location. And to be able to do that and also move into a more permanent home at the same time is just so exciting and hence, the up house. Each one of these balloons, Erica made this drawing by the way, isn't it impressive? Each one of these balloons represents $500 of our current mortgage. We want to do this in a way that is beyond financially responsible so that it doesn't put like a burden of emotional stress on us. So what we want to do is pay off our current mortgage entirely and save up a good bit of money on top of that so that we have a hefty down payment on this more expensive house. And look at this, even after our first month, we put a big chunk of the funds that I currently had in the business on the mortgage and look at the progress we've made. And I wanted to bring you guys in 
to this journey that we're going on as soon as possible because one, that way it'll be that much more satisfying for you guys as well as for us when we actually do achieve this if we're able to. And two, it's largely because of you guys that this is able to happen in the first place. This year, I've been able to incorporate sponsorships into these videos, which has provided us an entirely separate revenue stream that I wasn't really counting on. And the entire reason that exists is because you guys consistently watch the video. So I couldn't be more grateful and just wanted to say a big thanks again to you all. By the way, on the topic of watching videos, if you liked this one, I'm gonna link another huge trade-in video right right down here that I'm sure you'll love as well. Folks, thank you again for watching and until next time, I will catch you guys on the flip. Don't tell Eric I did that. <laughs>